So guys, we got this 2014 Mazda CX-5. It's just brought in. Customer had ran it out of oil the other day and they said now it runs like crap. It won't go over 20 miles an hour. So I did a full code scan and we got some ABS codes. I didn't look at them yet. ACU, there's a PCM code and a TCM. I did a fault report and it looks like it's just a misfire in cylinder two. Let's look at the other one. Invalid data from ECM. So we got a couple codes in there for other stuff. I'm gonna go after this misfire code. Now the customer does have the, the battery does die on here a lot because it has the failure, I think, with the shifter where you can't turn the car off, it'll just keep staying on no matter what you do. And like yeah, keep messing with it and messing with it. They were supposed to bring it for me to look at it a while ago and fix it, but we're just gonna go after this misfire real quick. Let's see, do they give us I wonder if they give us misfires in here. I guess while this is loading, I'll pop the hood. Oh, there we go. So, let's see. Re I wonder if it would be in our data stream or special functions. Let's check special functions. Oh, we could do a relative compression. I guess we can do that. Apply parking brake. There we go. Press OK. Let's try this again. Can we not do this now? So, if I hold the pedal to the floor, it doesn't go. And then... Yeah. Okay, so we're not even going to worry about that real quick. I wonder if we can do like a clear flood crank. I kind of don't want to start it because I don't want it to stay running. Can I not start it now? I can't start it in clear flood either. Can I not start this at all? I wonder if they left the keys there. They said they left the keys in the car. I don't know where they left them. Maybe that's why it won't. Maybe that's why we can't do the relative compression. They said, oh, I left the keys in the car for you. So I went and took my foot off the brake and then the car went to start. So let's try to do this relative compression again.
Yeah, it does not want to do that. I don't know if uh, that feels too good. I think we might just go do uh, relative compression manually since the tool doesn't want to do it. As soon as I press the gas pedal, it fails. So I'm going to go get everything set up and then we'll do a relative with a scope. So guys, I got my amp clamp set up. It's down here in the starter wire. Probably a little hard to see, but it's right there. And I'm going to try to screen record this this time for us. So I got my guys. I got my amp clamp set up. It's down here in the starter wire. Probably a little hard to see, but it's right there. And I'm going to try to screen record this this time for us. So I got my amp clamp zeroed, everything's set up. We're going to go crank this. So there we go. Let's go back and review this. Oops. Looks pretty consistent. Why does that do that? So I don't think there's an issue there. So I'm going to get this set up and we're going to go after secondary. So we'll move you over here. I'll go grab my secondary wand. I'm going to save this too. Save this as 2014. How's the CX5? Back. I think a one volt scale should be good. So I got my secondary lead here. Let's see. Hopefully we can get secondary on here. I don't know if I've ever done secondary on a Mazda. start the car we'll go from there now I've never started this before Cylinder one, cylinder two, got nothing. Oh, there we go. That's the misfiring one. You can see it. Looks like secondary misfiring. You can see the waveform. Yeah, 
3 looks good. 4 looks good. Looks like number 2 was already changed. You see that? That was a different coil. I'll go back to it. Yeah, it's definitely our issue. Let me save this. I guess we can just pull the plug or pull the coil and we'll look at the plug. So guys, I'm back. I got a socket. I think it's the right size. Let's see. I wonder what damaged this. Looks like it's all wet up here. I don't know if that's from water or if it's from something else. There's some oil in there. Let me grab a flashlight. Okay, I got a flashlight. Let's see what's in here. Doesn't look that wet. Let's see if I can show you guys. Looks pretty good. So we're going to get this plug out of here. Let's see, is there any issues with the boot? Any issues there? I must have been using the wrong size. Well guys, this thing definitely looks like it was carbon tracking or something. Look how this, it's like eating it's like eating away. I don't know how well this shows up on the camera. Can we use like a bolt? It's not in the way, but it's all built up around there. I don't know if that's oil that's burned. Let's see if we can grab the light and show you guys better. There you go, look at that. Here's where I cleaned it. So I bet you it was just like arcing down the side there. I 
I'm pretty sure that's what was happening. You could see those like spots on the outside where it hit the metal ring. So I'm gonna get some new plugs ordered. Guess we can pull out another one, see if another one's like that. Probably. What was damaging the edge of this? See that? There's probably arcing right there at the end. So I don't really see any on the inside. Maybe the light will help see if there's any on the inside. See that? Doesn't really look like there's really anything on the inside. So let's pull another one of these. I'll just pull a cylinder one and compare it. There we go. Move you guys over a little bit. Hey guys, here's the other one. So I'm gonna get some new plugs and we'll see if this fixes it. So guys, we're back with the Mazda. I got some NGK laser iridium plugs. It says that these are the OEM plug and supplier, so hopefully they are. It says the gap is supposed to be 30 thousandths to 33 new, and I believe it said stock plugs were 30 to 45 or something like that, which didn't really make any sense, so check the old ones. So we're almost at 50. Try that again. Yeah, we're almost at 50 on that one. I guess we'll take the other one out too. I tied these last night. I lose them when I came in this morning. So we'll take out this one. Let's check this one. So we're at 45 there. Oh wait, no. We're like 47 or so. Yeah, we're at like 47. I don't know if these are the original or not. This thing has 150,000 miles on it. I believe these should be pre-gapped. These are gapped at 45. 
I think I'm gonna put these in the way they are. Usually I gap them. But I don't know why it's a standard plug and new plug. When I look at the specs. I can always change them if it ends up not running right, but... We'll check this other one. So... Perfect at 45. I don't know how I always get these cars in here with like stupid high mileage for their year. Because this is 2014. It's like 150 some thousand miles on them. Customers said that they thought they had warranty on. Well, the warranty ran out at 100,000 miles. They bought it with 33,000. Some people might be like, why don't you current ramp the coil? But we obviously had an issue with the secondary. On that second coil. So there's no reason to current ramp it yet. Like I could have current ramped it, but if you have an issue with your plug, you can see some really weird issues. I'm trying to figure out where I set that coil. I don't know where I set the other coil yesterday. I set this cover back on. an ignition coil. I really hate the way these valve covers are designed. Let's 
see what kind of gap we have on this one. So we're like 47 or so. That one was like fuel fouled or something. Oh, let's get another plug out. Check this one. I think you guys would be surprised how many cars I had come in here already with new plugs and they never checked the gap and they were way off. These all look pretty bad there on the bottom. This one's another one that's up there pretty high. This is like 49 thousandths or so, 48. Oh, sorry about that, guys. These iridiums are hard to do on here. Should have probably just brought out a feeler gauge. Yeah, so we're up there pretty high. Exactly at 45. This one in. Probably gonna have to stop this video soon because I gotta take my nephew to preschool.
Okay guys, so we're back. My nephew's safe at preschool for the next like two hours or so. At least I hope he's safe at preschool. Get my gloves back on. I found the coil pack. I walked out here and must have fell all the way down back there yesterday. We'll get this one put on. We'll finish up with that last one. Let's grab our bolt. There we go with that. I think we put our spark plug in. I'm almost positive we did. Yeah, it's tight. Oh. There we go. So now we'll put our mission coil in. Do that, and uh, I'm gonna go run in, grab scan tool, and I'll grab my scope, and then we'll repeat our test. So guys, we're back with the car. Uh, I just did a. I just connected my die gun back up. I'm gonna do a system scan. Actually, I didn't want a system scan. I wanted a health report. Let me cancel this. I want to do a health report real quick. Hopefully this will show up. I want to clear all the codes. Then I want to test drive this to see if anything else comes back up. And then we'll see if this fixes the car. I did send in a message to, all, to launch about this reflash down here. When you press reflash, it rescans. So we'll clear all these since we already have them saved. There we go. Now I'm going to start this up. And then we'll take the secondary, we'll check the secondary, see if it's still misfiring. Probably no just by starting it. Um, let me connect my ground up. It's just laying here. Here we go. Our waveform looks a lot better too. There's coil one. 
is coil two, coil three, coil four. That's a whole lot better. So I'll save this and then we'll take it for a test drive. Let's go back and we'll just get uh Number two again. Definitely a lot better. back into this engine. Let's see if we can do this clearly. There we go. So we're going to system selection, PCM, oh guys and the uh, Mazda actually showing up on the tool today. I contacted the launch because yesterday I couldn't find Mazda. I'd have used, uh, what is it like? Is it like DY Mazda or something? There's a Chinese version. Let's see. Let's read data stream. Oh, we got misfire accounts. And I also noticed that there's a light on a dash for coolant. It's blue, it's kind of hard to see. There you go, it's that blue one. I don't know if that means low coolant or if it means something else. So we're gonna bring up coolant temperature. Looks like there's two cooling temperatures. That's weird, because we have engine coolant temperature, engine coolant temperature two. So we got two voltage and one degree. It says degree C here, yet yeah, it puts it in degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to take this for a drive and I'll see if these counters count up at all while driving. But I'm sure there's probably fuel in the cat 
and other stuff that could be causing a problem since it was driven on a misfire. Cat might even be damaged. Waveform looks a lot That's better too. There's coil one. Four There's coil two. Coil three. Coil four. That's a whole lot better. Well, that is thick. Now, there might be a part to do this. So I'll save this, and then we'll take it for a test drive. Monitors and that. So on our trip, we took the trip all the monitors. Let's go back and we'll just get uh on the two again. Definitely a lot better. say not ready. Oh, what was that one? It's hard because it keeps jumping around. Not ready. Catalyst monitor goes not ready. And then not supported. Let's see, read fault codes. Is this an old one? Oh, it says permanent. It's probably an old one, and I probably can't get, I might not be able to erase it. to PCM because the check engine light ain't on and we didn't show any misfires we didn't we showed zero misfires in cylinder one and two that whole time Fault codes. No DTCs. So there we go. Fixed. So I'll see if they want to look at the shifters. Mm -hmm. If we got to do a shifter, I'll make a part two. Hope you guys like this. See you later. So, guys, we drained the oil. And it almost overfilled my pan. I don't know how much it pulled. Probably over six quarts. And we didn't even take the filter off. Guys, we're gonna dump this pan, see how much oil's in here. Looks like we were at seven quarts. I don't know if you guys can see if that'll focus. Let me get a flashlight. Yeah, 
There we go. We are above six. So how many quarts did that hold? No, how many did the car hold? Five. So two quarts. Two quarts over.